Uh, thank you, Paul, and thanks to Share Cafe and all the participants out there for taking the time to listen today. Um, so our story is all about discovering, producing and delivering gas. And gas is an important and required transition fuel, and, and we're delivering it to where it's needed, Eastern Australia. Um, so let's go past the disclaimer and on to slide three, and there are some, some key takeaways here. Um, Vintage is a, a young Australian oil and gas company started and staffed by some very experienced people um, with long careers at companies like Beach, Santos, uh, SO and Origin. Um, we're experienced and proven in finding and producing hydrocarbons and also delivering corporate outcomes to great companies. Um, so at just five years old, Vintage is in a rather unique position, having onshore cost competitive reserves and resources for two commodity shortages currently affecting markets. And the shortages are for natural gas and food grade carbon dioxide, with the latter probably being rather a surprise to you. Um, of note is we already supply natural gas to the market, having commenced production in February this year from our first discovery. Now on slide four, um, you can see our portfolio of assets are all onshore Australian, and we believe with a high chance of technical success, and in most cases near critical infrastructure to assist with commercialisation. Now the, the flagship assets are in the Cooper Basin, a uh, prolific oil and gas producing region and an area that's actually very familiar to our staff. Um, Vintage is the operator and holds a 50% equity in two permits where we have, um, actually with our first two exploration wells in the region, already made two gas discoveries, Varley and Odin. And although both fields are still in the appraisal stage, uh, Vintage on behalf of our joint venture with Metgasco and Bridgeport has secured two gas supply contracts, um, commenced supply on the one from Bali and the soon to commence the second from Odin later this year. Um, we have a high quality CO2 discovery uh, at Nangwari in the Otway Basin in the southeast of South Australia, again at a 50% equity. Um, this is analogous to the nearby Caroline One World, which produced um, CO2 for the Australian market for almost 50 years up until 2017 when the field was depleted. Um, the Department of Energy and Mining will tell you it's the single most uh, economic well in South Australia. And we actually think Nangwari can replace Caroline and perhaps be an even better producer. And we also have a range of exploration assets at various equities. And we have a gazelle block for both oil and uh, perspective for both oil and gas in the Cooper Basin. And we have an onshore Otway Basin permit with Cooper Energy in Victoria, and that's on trend with gas discoveries in South Australia. We have permits in the Queensland Galilee Basin with Comet Ridge, where our very first ever company well flowed gas. We also have a permit in the onshore Bonaparte Basin, where there's an exist, a pre existing well cased ready for testing with over a thousand metres of strong gas shows. Now these um, exploration opportunities are being addressed, albeit at a slower pace. However, they form part of what is a very attractive portfolio for a, a growing small cap. Um, now slide five um, illustrates how our technical capability and commercial focus has delivered our good results uh, in what is a very short period of time. We only listed in September 2018 and have made the transition from pure explorer to producer in just four and a half years. Um, our Varley discovery was made in January 2020. And we took that from discovery to revenue generation in just on three years, um, with two appraisal wells um, also drilled along the way. Um, now we're preparing to bring our second field Odin online in September quarter this year. Um, less than two and a half years after we discovered that in May 2021. So we don't waste time on projects. Um, we've done many of these over the years with other companies. Um, we're economically attractive. I think we owe it to our investors to efficiently move to cash generation in what can sometimes in our industry appear to be a slow and capital intensive process. Now on slide six, um, you can see four key features that show we are in our view a unique small cap with exposure to conventional onshore gas, um, high quality CO2 and a lot more. And so firstly, as discussed earlier, we have a um, long-term contracts for gas supply to East Coast Australia with Valley Gas um, already being provided to AGL and Odin Gas to be supplied to Pelican Point Power and Adelaide Power Station joint venture for NG and Mitsui. Now this contract is due to start later in the current quarter. Now, secondly, Vintage has a lot of uncontracted gas, all of which is conventional, onshore and cost competitive. So our fields are connected through to Moomba, where our gas is processed and sold ex-Moomba, um, which is a hub for transport of gas through the eastern states. 
and we have approximately 42 petajoules of uncontracted 2P reserve at Bali and own production is currently uncontracted post 2024. So thirdly, food grade CO2 is a keenly sought after industrial commodity. Um, our Nangmuri resource has the scale suitable for multi-decade operations and uh, actually inbound inquiries have increased in recent months uh, as local supplies actually tighten. Now, fourthly, we have a great portfolio upside. There is significant gas and also oil potential around our Odin and Bali discoveries in the Cougar Basin. Um, plus, we're exploring improving hydrocarbon provinces, as I noted earlier. Now, moving on to slide seven, that shows some more detail on our Bali and Odin projects. Um, on the left, you can see the location of Moomba, uh, some 70 kilometres west of our gas fields. The zoom on the right, shows the two fields and the short 15 kilometre pipeline that we put in place from our fields to the Santos operator Beckler field. Now this connects us into the Moomba gas gathering network. And we also installed a small facility at Valley for metering, dewatering and cooling, um, which I should add is, is performing um, very, very well. So at Valley, we have net 2P reserves of 50.5 petajoules, three wells completed and connected. Um, Valley one is currently producing very well and Valley two and three are waiting on some equipment to bring them online. Um, the equipment has been held up recently and it's uh, rather frustrating, I should add, with the rather unusual and very wet weather in the basin. But we are appraising this field via production um, with the aim of preparing a full field development plan. Now at Odin, we have one well drilled, completed and flow tested at a particularly good rate of six and a half million standard cubic feet of gas a day. And we have independently certified 2C and its contingent resource of 19 petajoules net to vintage. And we're implementing an accelerated connection to the Valley Beck pipeline to get gas flowing from that field during Q3 2023. Now, slide eight um, shows a bit more info on the gas contracts. I've covered most of it already, but, but note the AGL contract runs from February 2023 to December 2026 uh, for a volume of between nine to 16 petajoules gross. Now, the Odin contract is from field startup to December 2024 and volumes for that are as produced. Now that contract was struck uh, under interim ACCC approval for joint marketing and in a higher pricing market situation than Bali. Um, we now have full ACCC approval for joint marketing and start marketing post 2024 volumes. Um, so to be clear, we certainly have significant value uplifts as we ramp up production under existing contracts and move to market uncontracted gas. Now, I should also mention that vintage is uh, under the guidelines we've seen from the federal government um, automatically exempt from the gas price cap under the mandatory code of conduct announced recently, uh, which is an important point. So now I'll move on from the Cooper Basin and on slide nine, um, you can see the location of our Nangwari um, CO2 resource north of Mount Gambia and Caroline One, the well I mentioned um, earlier. Now, Vinci shares this asset on a 50 50 basis with Lakes Blue Energy. Um, Nangwari has an independently certified resource of 12.9 BCF net to vintage, and on test, the Nangwari One will float at about 10.5 million cubic feet a day over a 36 hour period with double that rate over a shorter period. Over a shorter period. Um, now units are uh, always a bit confusing. So I suppose just to note, two million cubic feet of CO2 is about hundred tonnes. So 10 million cubic feet is about 500 tonnes. And the gross resource at Nangwari is therefore well over one million tonnes of CO2. Um, the gas is of high quality, about 93% CO2 and 6% methane and an excellent feedstock really for processing to food grade. Um, moving on to slide 10, why is CO2 so important? It's actually used extensively in food and beverage manufacturing, uh, beer being a very important example, um, also cooling, horticulture, healthcare, industrial lasers, fire suppression, it's a, it's a pretty long list. Um, Australia's consumption of food grade CO2 is up to around half a million tonnes per year. Um, now the impacts of CO2 shortages have been apparent uh, in the UK, New Zealand and Australia with numerous news articles in the paper recently. Um, so why the shortage? Um, less than 10% of food grade CO2 comes from natural supplies here in Australia. Industry waste gas counts for around 70% and with many industries reducing their carbon intensity and gas fired power stations being off more than on, 
um, the availability of CO2 is actually falling. Um, and we even have looming shortages here in South Australia with the retirement of gas-fired power gen units. So our resource flow rates and volumes can quite comfortably accommodate a 150 tonne a day plant. Um, we feel life exceeding 20 years. So I suppose um, the message there is stay tuned on this opportunity. So it's moving on to um, slide 11. I'd, I'd now like to wrap up um, with three important and key takeaways. So firstly, um, we move quickly, making the transition from explorer to producer within five years. Uh, two gas fields, two gas supply agreements, and installed pipelines and a facility in the midst of COVID. Went from discovery to first gas in three years. I mean, it's been great process of uh, progress, I should say, but there's, there's plenty more to come. Um, secondly, our production revenue and cash flow are growing. Um, gas production will go from one to four wells in the coming months. And we're looking forward to Odin coming online in Q3 with a high rate and high price contract. Uh, and we are funded to do the work required to make this all happen, having just completed a $5.6 million cap raise at the end of June. Um, thirdly, the value of our assets is rising. Um, East Coast gas and CO2 shortages, I think, have us very well placed. We've got lots of uncontracted onshore gas with access to market, um, plus a valuable industrial gas in CO2. Um, so we believe the future is pretty bright and we will continue to work hard for our shareholders um, to maximise value from our existing assets. And uh, we also stay on the lookout for any other opportunities that may arise. So thanks very much for listening. Thanks, Neil. Great presentation. Got a few questions for you. Uh, first one up, uh, you're currently producing from one well, having recently raised funds to increase production and cash flow. What are the milestones investors should be focused on and how do you see the business in six months time? Yeah, I think there are some, some good things happening over the next six to 12 months, actually. Um, during the month of, of July, we'll be working to get our next two barley wells on, online. Um, that's the first thing. And then we're really looking forward to bringing our, our Odin well online um, in the latter part of this current quarter. And they're all um, upticks to our revenue, so, so very important to us. And I think um, they're good milestones to look at. Um, later on in the year, we'll, we'll also be starting a, a more permanent connection of Odin um, into the, the Bali facility. Um, that's an important milestone as well. Um, so I think, you know, the next six months, um, really important. And we're starting also to, um, to look at our Vali production and assess that in terms of developing a full field development plan for that field going forward and looking at Odin to look at what we might do in terms of appraising that field. So a lot of things happening, a lot of things to keep us busy. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, there's a question here that they're thanking the viewer presentation today and you know, they were just asking, when can they expect uh, Vali 2 and Vali 3 to, to come back online? Uh, yeah, um, look, it has been frustrating. I mentioned that in the talk that uh, it's been raining a lot through Central Australia. We've been held up you know, over a month at the moment. The roads have actually been closed for the last um, couple of weeks. We're anticipating getting equipment out there um, maybe by the middle of this month, and uh, we'll see what we can do with regard to that and getting those wells online as soon as we can when that, that equipment gets there. It has well, been frustrating. Help. I feel for investors, um, it's been frustrating for us as well. Yeah, well, as we well know, one thing you can't control, and that's the weather. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> uh, the last majority of your gas is on con on contracted. What are the plans there? Are you seeking to contract it now, or do you have other plans? Yeah, a couple of things on, on that. Um, with Varley, we're going to look at the production from the three wells that we have at Varley and move to put together a full field development plan. It'll tell us how we want to drill up the field and how we want to contract the gas. So we're going to do that um, this financial year. Um, with respect to, to Odin, um, the more immediate thing there is we now have um, ACCC approval to go to market gas uh, beyond 2024. So I think it'd be a good thing to look at, at perhaps um, the next couple of years past that um, for contracting gas. And, and we are getting a lot of inbound inquiries at the moment on that, on that issue. Yeah, I got you. There's a question here. Uh, what are your margins for producing and how profitable can the wells be? Uh, well, the wells can be it can be very profitable um, because it is, uh, it is onshore gas. It is conventional gas. Um, you know, we're not forecasting um, our revenues at the moment, but you'll see those revenues come out um, very soon in our, our quarterlies as we progress. And I think we're getting 
certainly good pricing on our gas. Um, as I said, we're not subject to the, the price cap because we're a domestic producer uh, and we're a small producer under 100 petajoules, so we're not impacted by that cap. So I think our margins can be, can be very, very good. And one to finish up with here uh, in regards to uh, is it Nang Wari. Nang Wari. Yes. Nang Wari, sorry. Accepting this is an unusual resource that is yet to be subject to any agreements, what should the investors be thinking of it in respect to the timeline for monetization of this resource, the business plan, and the capital requirements? Yeah, sure. It is, is a little bit of an unusual one. Um, in terms of putting in a plant to process it to, to food grade, um, you know, construction of a plant would take, you know, probably between 12 to 18 months um, to do that. The cost of the plant would be about, uh, say, 25 to $30 million. Um, the sort of business plan um, for that um, it could be done in a number of ways. The one we're looking at at this point in time is perhaps getting an infrastructure group to come in and, and build the plant and operate the plant and for us to be told through the plant and then we sell, sell X plant. Of course, there are other ways to monetize it as well. We could uh, we could sell the asset, or we could sell the gas at at the wellhead, have a, a wholesaler um, build the plant. But the current thing is looking at that infrastructure build and um, working with buyers at the moment to help uh, help see if we've got off takers to underpin the cost of that plant. Neil Gibbons, many thanks for your time today, and we'd love to get you back on uh, at, uh, later in the year. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks, Paul.